Hello class. In this video, we're going to talk about adding and subtracting rational expressions. And once again, uh, rational expressions are nothing more than fractions with uh, variables, either in the form of monomials or polynomials, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, before we get started, let's talk about these rules. Uh, rule number one, okay, when you're adding or subtracting rational expressions, your denominators must be the same, okay, before you can add all the numerators together. Uh, so your denominator must be the same, and when, once you find the denominator, you have to de determine the new numerator, and I've kind of written down kind of like the formula on how to find the new numerator over here, okay? And once you've done that, you've got to combine all the like terms in the numerator, and then once you've done that, you've got to simplify uh, the expression if necessary. And uh, let's go through some examples to tell you, uh, how to show you how that's done. So for this example, we're going to use just regular fractions so that you can understand the concept of how we follow these rules, all right? So 2 minus 13 over 8. Now generally, uh, we have a whole number subtracted by fraction. And generally, the rule is anytime we have a whole number, we'll make that into a fraction by putting a 1 under it, OK? So now we've made 2 into 2 over 1. That's a fraction. Minus 13 over 8, all right? So now this is our fraction. So let's see, uh, with this fraction, all right, the first thing we need to do is determine uh, what the uh, denominator must be because we have to have uh, the same denominator. Now in this case, okay, we've got a one and an eight, and simply to find the denominator here, okay, uh, using process of least common multiple, if you wanna go through that whole process, our common denominator is going to be an eight, all right? So that's the first thing we're going to do. So our common denominator is going to be an 8. Okay? Now, the next step is to determine what our new numerator is going to be. Now, to get our new numerator, okay, since we have our denominators has changed, the, we have to make the adjustments in our new numerator. We have to use the old, we have to use the old numerators, which is the 2, and it's going to be multiplied by some number. We don't know what it is yet. And then we're going to use the 13, which is also multiplied by this some number. And we don't know what it is yet either. All right? So let's go ahead and do that. Now, how do we determine the new numerator? Well, to do that, we're going to take this new denominator, all right? And we're going to divide it by the old denominator, okay? Which is 1 in this case, 8 divided by 1, okay? And that's the number that's going to go here. So 8 divided by 1 is just 8, all right? Okay. And for this one, we're going to do the same thing, right? Since the denominator hasn't changed here, okay, the numerator will not change either. But let me just show you how the process, uh, how, what the process is to actually get that same numerator. So we do the same thing. We're going to take this uh, new denominator, right? And we're going to divide it by the old denominator. Okay, which is 8 divided by 8, which is just 1. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply these. Okay, we're going to multiply these numbers. Sorry. All right, so 2 times 8, that'll give us uh, 16 over 8. Minus 13 times 1 is just 13 over 8. So now we have a common denominator with some new numerators that we can actually combine the like terms. So in this case, we're combining the numerators and we're going to keep the denominators as is. Okay, so you can, this can be rewritten as 16 minus 13 all over 8. Okay, if you guys have any experience with fractions. Now, so what do we get when we do this? Well, this is going to be 16 minus 13 is going to be 3 over 8. And the last step, we're going to try to see if we can simplify to see if it's necessary. And in this case, you can't reduce this anymore. So this is not, this is as simplified as it's going to get. So this is our answer for this particular problem. All right? Any questions on that? Uh, rewind back, rewind back, and just see what we did uh, to actually get to this point. All right? Now, let's do the second example, which is a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to have to erase this. I might need the room. So with this problem, what we have is a polynomial, okay, and the polynomial also in our denominators. 
and using the uh, using a process of least common multiple to get our least common denominator for our fractions. Okay, we're gonna let's let's go ahead and do that first. All right, so we've got an x plus four. Okay, we're gonna find the factors of that, and we've got an x squared minus sixteen, and we're gonna find the factors of that. Okay, because those are this is our denominators right here. Okay, these are denominators, and we have to find a common denominator before we can actually add the numerators together. Now, with x plus four, there is no known uh, factoring method to factor that. So this remains as x plus 4. All right? Now, x squared minus 16, we can factor this using what's known as the difference of squares. And once again, that's another topic that we, we don't need to get into in this particular uh, uh, lesson. But you can look that up in a different video. Okay? But the result that you'll get is whatever the square root of this is that goes here. Okay? The square root of x squared is going to be x and x. And whatever the square root of 16 is, that's what we put here. And we put a plus and a minus uh, inside the parentheses. So now we have our factors. So these are our factors, okay, using the least common multiples method okay, for our x plus 4 and x squared minus 16. Now to get our least common multiple, which is going to become our uh, denominator, is we look to see uh, the factors and we represent them once. We have an x plus 4 here and an x plus 4 there, so we have to represent that at least one time. Okay? And then we have an x minus 4, which we have to represent at least one time. And the rule is, okay, we pick the factors with the highest power, but all of their powers are just 1. That's a 1 here and a 1 here, so the power here is just 1. We don't show that. Okay? And then here we just the power of 1 also for x minus 4, so we don't show that either. So, let's go back to our problem, since now this is our... This is our, our least common denominator. Okay, that is the result that we get from the process of least common multiples. And let's go ahead and write that in. So we're going to write our new fraction to replace this fraction with its common denominator. So here's our common denominator, which is x plus 4 and x minus 4. And this is also going to be x plus 4 and x minus 4. Still with me? Alright, now, the next step is to find whatever the new numerator is. Since we've changed the denominator, we have to make the adjustment in our numerator, okay, to, uh, to, our, to our problem. So, to do that, we're going to use, like I said, there's a formula for it, but I'll show you how that's done here, okay. To find a new numerator, we have to use the old numerator, which is 16, and multiply it times some number. And over here for this particular um, expression, we're going to have to use that old numerator and multiply it times some number. And once again, we don't know what it is yet. All right? Now, to get, to get this number that goes inside these parentheses, we have to divide, we have to divide the new denominator. Okay? So I have to divide this. Uh, put a division sign right there. By this. Okay? Now, x plus 4, x minus 4 is technically x squared minus 16. It's the same number. This is just the factored form of it. So technically what we're doing is dividing this into itself. So what we're going to get is a 1. Because this is technically x squared minus 16 factored, divided by x squared minus 16, which is just 1. Okay? So that's what we put here. Now for this one, we're going to take this new denominator, divide it by the old denominator, which is x plus 4. Now, if we were to write that out, it would look like this right here. We'll, we'll write over here. We have x plus 4, okay, and x minus 4, which is our new denominator, divided by our old denominator, which is x plus 4, okay. But this cancels, and we're left with x minus 4. And that's what goes here. Okay, so now that we've got that, okay, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and multiply these numerators together as needed. All right, so 16 times one, this is still a 16. That's this times this, right? Okay, plus, and we're going to distribute that two to the x minus four, so it'll be plus two x minus eight, 
right? All divided by, since these denominators are the same, we can write it as a single denominator, x plus 4, x minus 4, all right? So now that we have that, okay, we're just going to combine the like terms in the numerator. So my like terms are 16 and negative 8. Is that correct? All right? So is that negative 8 or plus? It should have been a plus. No, okay, negative 8. So, so 16 minus 8 is going to be, well, actually 2x is by itself. So we're going to write that in first. That has, that has no other like terms. 16 minus 8 is just going to be plus 8. All divided by x uh, plus 4, x minus 4. So all we've done at this point is we combine all the numerators, which is that right here together, to get this right here. Okay? Now that we've done that, the last step is to simplify if necessary. Now, we don't know if we can simplify this or not. We actually have to factor this numerator. If it's factorable, we factor it. If not, we're done. But in this case, we can factor the 2x plus 8. There's the greatest common factor between the 2 and the 8, and I can pull that out to be a 2. And I'm left with 2x divided by 2 is going to be x. 8 divided by 2 is going to be plus 4. So this, broken down, becomes this, my numerator. My denominator is still the same. It's going to be x plus 4, x, uh, x minus 4. Now, as you can see, if we're trying to simplify this, we can cancel whatever uh, like numbers are between the numerator and denominator. So here we've got an x plus 4 that we can cancel on the denominator and the numerator. And that is all the numbers that I see. So our answer here, what's left in the numerator is going to be a 2. And, and the, I'm sorry, the numerator. And the denominator is going to be x minus 4. So that is our answer. Okay?